This week, the Georgia Traveler team is biking the Beltline, surfing the coast, glamping in the mountains, and climbing walls in Atlanta. Atlanta gets a bad rap for being a motor city. It's traffic, traffic, and more traffic. Well, there's a place where you can walk, bike, run, shop, eat, and visit, all without filling up on gas first. What is an activity that is part outdoor exercise, part open air museum? You can bring the kids, you can bring your dog, and you get to go through great eclectic neighborhoods, check out restaurants and shops. Hmm, if only there were such a place. Hmm, let's see if I can find one. The Atlanta Beltline officially opened in 2008, but it's still a work in progress, covering 22 miles in one big loop, or belt, around Atlanta's downtown, connecting 45 of its diverse, historic, and hip neighborhoods. Joining everyone together and buckling us in to one big, happy Atlanta melting pot. On any given Sunday, or Saturday, or weekday for that matter, you can see walkers, joggers, bikers, skaters, cute kids and cute puppies, people strolling with strollers, and even sweet rides to borrow from the nearest six-year-old. Today we're exploring the East Side Trail, the first finished section of the Beltline, which runs from Piedmont Park to Inman Park in the Old Fourth Ward. Lemonade, five cents for good advice. My advice is good, really. Anyone? Here you will find restaurants, businesses, shops, a skate park, and plenty of pit stops to enjoy the artwork. I'm calling this one burger and fries. Why am I suddenly hungry? No problem there. There's always pop stops, too. <laughs> and the Beltline has been a boon to local businesses. And what better business along a Beltline than a bike shop, which is perfect if you don't live in Atlanta, because you can park out and back, take your rental bike out the front. The amount of people walking past your business is, is huge. It's location. And right now in the city of Atlanta, this is the best location that you can get. The Beltline has brought us a nice rental business. Uh, we rent bikes, uh, and people can take them anywhere they want to. To me, you know, the bicycle is, is transportation. The Beltline is the place to be as far as uh, riding bikes. And then right next door is Civil Bikes, which provides historic tours of the Beltline. Check out the great views of Atlanta's skyline and appreciate Atlanta's old architecture, like the historic Sears building. And you can bike by Atlanta History. It's now a shopping center, but this area used to be the Atlanta Crackers baseball field. Also, you will notice the coolest thing. It is the Beltline Arboretum Trees Atlanta project. And my favorite feature, art on the Beltline, with Atlanta's largest public arts project, spread out along eight curated miles, with bike themes, of course. And these guys made out of old pieces of the railroad. And that brings us to the best part. The Atlanta Beltline is more than just the most awesome sidewalk ever. While the sidewalk may be new, the Beltline has a history that goes back more than 100 years. Well, it was an operating railroad, of course. And in the old days, in the 20s, when the Sears building was originally built, the railroad actually pulled into the building. A uh, warning, low clearance, canopy will not clear, man on top or side of car, which is pretty amazing. It's kind of scary, that's yeah. a real, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, head clearance has yeah. a whole different meaning right, around here. Right. The Beltline follows the path of Atlanta's original railroad, and today you can still see some of those original rails, preserved as bits of transportation history. And here's where it gets even cooler. This incredible piece of Atlanta all started with a grad student's thesis project back in 1999. Seriously. You said, hmm, I, I might make, make a drawing or two and get an A. What, how did this whole thing happen? Well, I started college at Georgia Tech in 1991, on, lived on the West Campus, and was sort of fascinated with the gritty industrial side of the city and would, would drive around following the old railroads all the way through the city, following maps. And that land is really unique to have this loop formation around downtown. So that was 
became the sort of compelling idea for the project. From there, Ryan was inspired by the High Line in New York's Chelsea neighborhood, also an old railway turned into a public park. Many years later, and with grants and contributions, the Atlanta Belt Line is now one of the largest urban redevelopment programs currently underway in the entire country. But it's a whole lot more. During the week, we're all in our cars. Atlanta's known for their traffic. You go from your house to your car to your office. On the weekends, if you're out on the Beltline, you're like, oh, here's all the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of the idea. Right. Well, and it happens every day, too. It's where we live our lives. This is where we meet each other and fall in love and raise our families. And so the idea with the Beltline is to build a more life-affirming infrastructure that actually changes the way that we live. <laughs> It still just tickles me to no end to see how much it's used. It's become like Atlanta's boardwalk. And you never know who you might meet on the Beltline. Chantelle Ritter is an artist who once worked on Mardi Gras parades. When she moved to Atlanta, she brought that funky New Orleans vibe along with her. I think that the way New Orleans has such a strong cultural identity comes from that. They love their physical space. They love their city streets. They're very, very proud of their culture and their place. I think that has everything to do with the fact that they inhabit it so frequently. When she noticed that Atlantans don't inhabit their own streets that frequently, she thought a parade on the Beltline would be just the trick. Well, I believe that creative events based in participation foster enduring bonds between people and place. So laying down joyful shared memories together, I thought would um, help make everybody love it. And it did. The Atlanta Beltline Lantern Parade started in 2010 and has grown every year with tens of thousands of participants and neighbors coming together. And that's really the best part of the Beltline. In a world where we're always staring at our phones, computers, and our cars, offices, and homes, the Atlanta Beltline gets us out to meet new friends. Oh, look, don't we twirl? We twirl, we see and be seen. We're so fabulous. Am I twirling correctly? Yes. I have to get my, my Beltline twirling down. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many ways to access the Beltline, so we're going to put a few links on our Facebook page to help you find your way around. But for now, we're going to head down to Tybee Island where Phil says he's going to learn how to surf. Now these kids are taking lessons from the Tybee Island Surf School. I asked if I could join the class. After all, I did play football. How hard can it be? This dude right here. Is the guy. So I, I hear you're uh, our nine o'clock. And I hear you have the privilege of trying to teach me how to surf. And that's right, I mean, butter. Butter, what's happening, my man? Nice Big bird. bird. Big bird! Oh, <laughs> love it, man, love it. It's like if you're gonna have to learn how to surf, you wanna have people like Butter and Big Bird hanging out with you. Now, y'all know, you look at this. Yes. You're gonna put me on a surfboard and you're gonna teach me how to surf. We're gonna make the miracle happen. All we need is just a good consorted attitude. We need that fun spirit. We need to make sure that we're, we're out there on that water having a great, great time. So all we need to do in order to surf is have fun. I feel like I'm in good hands with these guys. Guess what? We getting ready to go surf. Let's do this thing. All right, excellent. While Big Bird goes and gets the campers ready, Butter and I began my first lesson on sand. OK, so we're going to work on the two skill sets of lockout and pop up right now. Now, you're a former Gamecock. Do I have that correct? You have that correct, Absolutely. sir. Absolutely. Proudly, okay. yes, All right. sir, representing. So, so think about those springs or those two-a-days in summer when Coach had you doing the up-downs. That's exactly what we're going to be doing now. Brother, you going to have me doing up-downs? Hey, up -downs. hey oh. try, try, try not to, to oh, freak out on me. Man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Those days never go away. We want to come to this lockout position, chest up off the board, grabbing the board with our toes. All right, can you show me that? Let's see if we can do it together. All right. Pop up. Right there, you got it. Okay, fantastic. So what I'd like you to do now is actually go ahead and, and draw out a surfboard in front of you. Put that nose out there. Nice. Nice and way out in front of you. There you go, just like that. Absolutely. And we've got our stringer right here. A stringer. Perfect. So our hands are on, on equal sides of that. And we're going to lock out and we're going to pop up. And we want to try to put our feet perpendicular with the stringer. We don't want them over here on the rails. Right? We want them perpendicular on the stringer. All right. So point those toes towards that rail. Ready? Lock out. Pop up. Excellent. Uh, yeah, you got there. it. Okay. We're getting there. Let's do it two, two more times. Oh, man. Now two I'm starting time. to feel it. Two more right, right. Lock out. Pop up. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Last one. Oh, yeah. Ready? Here we go. Lock out. Pop up. You got it. You got it. Man. <laughs> excellent. That's excellent. All of a sudden, I have flashbacks of two a day, <laughs> and I'm breathing heavy. <laughs> Man, I thought the sand lesson had me breathing heavy. 
But then I joined the campers and realized, whoo, that's only the beginning. Get those shoulders loose. Small backward. Good. Ha, <laughs> butter. Big backwards. <laughs> you guys ready to surf? Oh, my gosh. You guys sound like you just woke up. Are you guys ready to surf? Yeah. In the stance. In three, two. Lock out, pop up. Good, one more. Lock out, pop up, hold it in stance. Hold it in stance. Oh, I don't Seven, know how much more I got Six, five, four, three, two, and a half, one. Down. <laughs> that was a great workout. I didn't know I was going to get my ropes in this way. Come on now. But you always take your kids through that warm up. Absolutely, got to get the heart rate going, have to loosen those muscles. There's also a component of this that's balance and flexibility. You know, and that's going to be universal for any sport that they play. It's time to get, like, fill on the board, I guess. Eh? I'm tired. I got to go. <laughs> to get my board lesson, I met up with the big kahuna, Uncle Jimmy. Now, Uncle Jimmy is the founder of Tybee Surf School and the original owner. One of the key elements to surfing is the center of gravity needs to be low. It's nice and low. <laughs> nice and low. And I'm going to get down there, and then you're going to have to help me back up. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to ask you for your hand. OK, oh. thank you. Ah! Oh, return the favor early. <laughs> <laughs> paddling, paddling. Here it comes. OK, pop up. Oh, my gosh. He is a natural. OK, I think you got that. Let's go try getting wet. Right, so Uncle on. Jimmy takes my hand, and off we go for the water. Are you like me? I love camping. Being out in nature, falling asleep, looking up, seeing nothing but the stars above you. However, our guest correspondent Raven Toronto found out there's a way to camp without really camping. Bugs, dirt, sleeping on the ground all comes to mind when I think about camping. Thanks, but no thanks. I like a little glamour to my outdoor adventure. Behold, my campsite. Tucked away in Lula, Georgia, North Georgia Canopy Tours provides all your camping needs with a dash of high class. These hundred acres of beautiful land are owned by Kirk and Leah Watkins. Once an old mill, the property is now a place where you can enjoy an adventurous experience and a relaxing stay. Kirk and I bought it, and then we just started adding to the property. And as a result, it was one of those things we just really wanted to share with others. And, and you can share with your family, but we wanted to expand that. So that's when we developed the canopy tour and the disc golf and added teepees. I met up with Leah for a guided tour. Our first stop, disc golf. The professional disc golf course consists of 18 holes covering more than two miles of river crossings, rolling hills, and the number 12 known as the chicken coop. Our next stop is what North Georgia Canopy is best known for. Zip lining. I set my sights on the three hour adventure tour. But if that's too much zipping for your taste, take the two hour Skybridge tour. Welcome to Lula, 
Georgia, home of the North Georgia Canopy Tours. I'm falling on the ground now. <laughs> It's been a fun yet exhausting day. It's time to check in and get my teepee ready. The best part about these teepees? Air conditioning, hotel style beds, and most importantly, outlets. I really wanted to have something here at the property that was very different for people to experience, something they really couldn't do anywhere else. After unpacking my things, I head to the campfire to make new friends and of course, eat a few s'mores. Here's how to make the perfect s'more. Get your marshmallows nice and golden brown. All right, get you some graham crackers, your Hershey's chocolate bar. Here okay, goes nothing. <laughs> well, that boom. is great. Mm -hmm. All the way. <laughs> Our there you go. Campfire. <laughs> Finally, I head back to my teepee. With champagne and cheese in tow, I feel like I'm right at home. Mama. Getting out of here in the wilderness has helped me clear my mind. This is really roughing it. I actually had to open my own bottle of champagne. But I guess this is what camping and getting in touch with nature is all about. I love you, Mom. Talk to you soon. sleep in my cozy TV, I'm starting to feel differently about camping. I can honestly say it's pretty cool. I did it! I survived the wilderness! All right, I'm hungry. So I was looking for a rock climbing adventure and believe it or not, one of the biggest and the best is here in Northeast Atlanta, just off Interstate 85. Introducing the nation's largest indoor rock climbing gym, Stone Summit. The main goal was to provide a climbing area for people of all ages. We could bring in beginners, but then also suit the professional athletes. And speaking of beginners, David and I decided to climb the wall together as longtime co-hosts and friends. This is a story I've been wanting to do for a long time, and turns out I actually wanted to do it too. So, you know, I, the kind of person I am, I said, come on, you know, you can do this with me. But it's a competition. David is the most athletic host on this show. He's definitely the sportiest. He's always wearing his sporty pants and his sporty shirt and his zip-up hoodie. And he always looks the part, and the rest of us, you know, it's a struggle. This is the largest indoor climbing wall in America, and I tend to tame it pretty quickly. This looks like on top of me, so everybody just follow me, because we need a little controversy, because it feels so empty without me. I was a, an Eagle Scout, actually, and uh, I climbed rocks, I climbed mountains. I've climbed Stone Mountain, I've climbed Kennesaw Mountain, I've climbed to the highest peak in the Chattahoochee Nature Trail. Uh, Ashley's climbed Cumberland Island. I think that's good. So I heard what David was saying about me in his pre-interview, so I'd like to change tack a little bit because I think I came toward it a little more amicably at first, but now, you know, he's being a braggart. It's time to cut him down to size. David's putting his diaper on right now. And I see him out there with uh, doing some reconnaissance with three-year-olds, and that's about the level of expertise he has. So I'm gonna go talk to the real experts and see if I can't beat him out there. I can't figure out where my left foot goes. I'm really falling in love with outdoor sport climbing. It's just freeing. You're climbing these huge 80-foot cliffs. Sounds dangerous. OK, yeah. for those of us who want to be in a controlled indoor environment, we have courses like these at Stone yeah. Summit. And these are called what? Where we put our hands and feet. Okay. What you generally use for your hands are called holds. Okay. And generally, the smaller ones that you're not really using for your hands are called jibs. And then between the holds, there's all different types. So this one, you'd really call it a jug, just because it's really big, really easy to hold on to. Um, this one, you'd probably call a crimp, because you're kind of having to lock your fingers into it. A crimp? Yeah, so I you crimp it. I thought that was something you did with your hair. Basically, yeah. that's where it came from. Okay. You crimp it. Got you it. Kinda, that's called a sloper. Yeah, just something like this, where you just have a sloping type of grip. So sloper, crimp, hold, jug. A jug, jug jib. Jug jib. Yeah, jib is for your feet. Ooh. You see, Ashley felt the need to talk to a few experts. I, on the other hand, stuck to my daily workout regimen. 
Definitely the dinosaur slide is probably one of my favorite parts of this entire building. David and I both went down mostly because he is a dinosaur. And what do you think about having old bones compared to her being young? Ashley is 10 years younger than me. That should give her an advantage, but I've worked out before. It's not like a muscle thing. You don't need extra, you know, upper body strength. Use your legs. Use your legs, yes. And this is a beginner wall, right? It is. Okay. 25 sure, yeah. feet of beginner. Yeah. I don't need any special concessions. Uh, I like you going first. Easy enough. What? Yeah. We didn't discuss this. Well, no, we talked about it I, with other people. Oh, that so, means yeah, we yeah, did yeah. not talk good. about it. No. How are we going to approach this here? I say we time it. Y'all got the time? Okay. Yeah, we're going to time it. We're going now. Yeah. She's All right. You are good to go. So, woman to woman, Laura, please step away. Um, anything else I need to know just to do, you know, outperform the testosterone in the room? Um, actually, women are naturally better climbers than right. men, so you just have the upper hand. I have an advantage. Naturally, yes. If I don't squander it. Exactly. I'm not a very athletic person. Don't mess this up. Heat one. Reluctantly crouched at the starting line. Engines pumping and thumping in time. The green light flashes, the flags go up. Churning and burning, they yearn for the cup. They deftly maneuver. What was the time on that, guys? Under a minute. Wow, 33.05. You gotta beat that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have a bad toe. It's uh, the right toe's off. Okay, and three, two, one. Are we doing heats? I don't know that he climbed better, but he definitely climbed faster. Yes, and it looked pretty good when I was growing up. Uh, may have banged a knee, battle scar, but felt pretty good. I was feeling really good about myself at that point. David was looking a little frantic, you know, looked strong in the beginning, but kind of shaky towards the top. Ashley, you know, is cruising most of the way. So my mentality is to come back stronger in the second heat taken by storm. You can get a little practice while Ashley's not watching. This is the auto belay, so you can just hook in and do it on your own. I've seen a lot of great resources around here. I know that there's a wall with an auto belay, and David hasn't even noticed that. Technical difficulty. My hair is stuck. Oh, God. Whew. <laughs> Lost my beautiful mane at rock climbing. Heat two. Timekeeper. Three, two, one. <laughs> hey now. That's Are fun. you ready for some of that out there? After Ashley goes, I need yeah. to rest. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What was the I'm time on that? 40 seconds. He got 40? Yeah. 40. You can easily, right. easily beat 40. 40 seconds. She's a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took the men. Did you get me? Oh, she got me. She oh. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Go. Darn it. We're neck and neck now. Yeah. yeah so, that's awesome. tiebreaker. The final challenge. What's it going to be? I think we should. Showdown. I think we should face off. Heat three. The final confrontation. Yeah. So, where do you feel it the most? Your forearms, hands, uh, your in your heart. Heart. <laughs> no, my, my left, my right toe. Well, I'm proud of you, David. Thank you, you too. Good job. That was fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Good teacher, you, Peyton. Yeah. Gave me that extra name. Good job, both of you. I was hoping they didn't see it. No, no, no. I was hoping they didn't see it. I think it was a wonderful experience overall. I'd come back and do this a million times over, but I think the most important thing is David really needed this win for his ego. It was so important to him. And I'm glad he had it and I support the, hey! hey how's it going? Just bragging on you over here. <laughs> Man, I had nothing but good things to say about you. Cool. I, mean, I think 
you took to the wall. That was awesome. Likewise, David. Yeah. I'm really impressed with you. And you look beautiful, and the Thank sport you. is really becoming on you. Style points. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, yeah, you I mean, don't even have to look in a mirror the rest of the day because you're just glowing. Really? Yeah. I think, yeah. I feel good about myself. You should too. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think we both look good out there. We'll try this again sometime. We should. Next time is best out of ten, all right? You got it. <laughs> That's all for this week of Georgia Traveler. I'm David Zelski. Until next time, pleasant journey. Georgia Traveler is produced in partnership with the Georgia Department of Economic Development. This is a GPB original production.